Hello there, party people. We are snowed in. We got a bunch of snow today. So, seven in, like five or seven inches. Yeah, a lot. So it's most we've gotten in a minute. So yeah. Miss Madison wanted some hot chocolate. We don't have any. We didn't want to leave to go get some. And so I proposed making some with some almond milk and some Hershey's chocolate. So here's our milk, almond milk. We got some chocolate. I have the pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm really not too sure, uh, cause I'm pretty sure it's the lipids in milk that you can get real warm and it won't break, it won't like damage it. So I'm, I'm gonna do kind of a slow, like heat up so I don't break the almond milk. Um, the chocolate should provide some. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just so it's like not so rich and heavy and sweet. Um, I probably won't really add that much water thinking maybe like just enough to cover the bottom and then a little extra so you see that in there like on the edge maybe like eighth of an inch or so former carpenter now cook I look at measurements isn't that funny um but yeah so i got that on there um now that water's in there we can go ahead i'm just gonna put it i'll do a two and a half i think we'll do a two and a half see what that does um, so we'll go ahead and give this almond milk a shake. And because it's almond milk, I can enjoy some too. So I'm actually going to try to make enough for two mugs worth, maybe a little bit more. So we got some more in there. And I want it pretty chocolatey. So let me see. Right here is a little over two bars. Pop that in there. Actually, I think I'm just going to put all this, all the rest of this chocolate in there. So it's going to be, it's going to come out to be about six bars, maybe seven, because there's like some like little fragment pieces like that. You see like on the edge, and I have like a little chunk on that edge too. So probably be a little bit closer to seven. So I'll put those in there. Um, I'm going to set a timer for two minute intervals. Um, every two minutes, I'm going to come and stir it um, so it can be thoroughly melted and whatnot. So. Um, I'm expecting this to take about eight to 10 minutes or so, but I will let you know when I'm done how long it actually took. Um, so, sorry I said um so much. My public speaking teacher would be very upset with me. But anyways, I'll get that going and then we will reconvene and I'll let you know how the results are looking and how it is. Thank you guys. Three minutes has passed. I want to give a little extra time to heat up. So, this is what we're looking at. You can see the chocolate is all nice and mixed in there. It's looking a little bit thicker. Um, I'm kind of waiting for some of those smaller chunks to really melt and blend in. And then we'll we'll go from there. So this might take a little bit less time than I thought. Um, I thought it was going to take about like 10 minutes or so. Um, I've left the temperature at two and a half uh, like, I, like I had it on previously. So... This probably will work out pretty good, I'm hoping. I just gave it a little sniff to make sure it had enough chocolate smell in there, and there definitely was. This smelled real, real good. So hopefully the vanilla um, almond milk and the chocolate will kind of sweeten each other and give a really nice little delightful flavor. So it's darkened a little bit. You can tell it was like, I'll turn on this big light just so we get a little more contrast. It's not like as white as the almond milk was, um, so. Yeah, we'll see how it does. We'll have a review here in a little bit for you, I'm sure. Probably only a couple more minutes. So maybe like a total of like six minutes, maybe? Probably not that long. So, all right, we'll be back. Hi, party people. Welcome to Hot Chocolate and You. Our hot chocolate's looking real good now. It's all warmed up. Um, it did take about the time I, I was expecting, uh, probably about the eight to 10 minutes. Um, it's just barely steaming now, um, so that's warm enough that I don't think I'll be breaking like a lot of the, the fats and the lipids and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get these poured up into some mugs. Should we do it like over the sink so yep. it doesn't? Okay. Yep, that's what I was going to do. So it doesn't make a mess. It's kind of hard not to. Oh, jeez. Do fast. I do fast. There we go. 
Basically, my two mugs. Not too bad. Mmm. He may have uh, just made me decide how I'm eat, drinking my hot chocolate now. Converted. It might be cheaper this way, no? It might be. These are all melted together. Or at least, did I leave them sitting next to like a coffee pot or something? Mm. Okay. Oh, that's pretty warm. I'm saying like when they're melted together. Like I have to pull them apart. Yeah, it's good. These are one good marshmallow family. You gotta like a little clip. I have a bigger clip if you got it. All right, we might need to let these cool for a little bit. It's pretty. This is my cool. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. My cool Pac-Man. We got it on one of our first. No, it was like our six-month anniversary. Yeah. We, we got went it to at, uh, uh, Brun uh, Summit. Summit up north off Interquest. It's like a big arcade place. It's really cool. We actually one night with some tickets. So I didn't want like candy and stuff like that. I wanted something I could like keep. You know. Yeah. And so we I'm also wanted... got some lamp things that have oh, like the strings. Yeah, these like LED lamps that have all these hairs that are sticking out of the top of them, like a little cone and lights up the room. I forgot oh, about that's those. That's good. That's hot. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's ama some amazing cocoa. You guys should try that. Almond milk, a little bit of Hershey's. So I am lactose intolerant, so the Hershey's will have like a little bit of milk chocolate in there, but most of the almond milk will like negate that, so it'll be real high. So, but yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We did like a little cooking. Um, we had shepherd's pie for dinner. Um, I was like kind of an experiment. I haven't done that. So we will do a cooking video on that when I recreate it my second time. I have like a little bit better idea of the sequence of events that need to occur. And I also had multiple things going on at once. And so it was kind of hard to like focus on filming and stuff like that. So, but we got hot cocoa. We got our a good meal and stuff like that. And so. Hello there, Star Wars fans and aficionados. I'm here to review the current episode of The Book of Boba Fett. I am going to include some spoilers in here. I am going to talk about some characters and, and some uh, transpirings that happen in the episode. So if you do not want any spoilers, please tune away, fast forward, do not observe or perceive. I'm going to give you five seconds to do so. Okay, let's get started. I like the episode. It was a very good episode. Um, I really enjoyed it. However, this is the book of Boba Fett. I have been watching Boba Fett since I was a little boy, five years old, shortly after Return of the Jedi came out. And we got it on, I think it was on our disc player, or it wasn't on VHS yet. I think it was on our disc player, actually. I saw it the first time. Well, I saw it in theaters when I was little, but I was like three. It came out in 83. I don't, I don't remember it. So when I was five, and you know, your mind awakens, you actually start forming memories and stuff. So I've been really a big fan of Boba Fett. In that episode, he was on screen for maybe a minute and a half of the full episode. All the rest of it was the Mandalorian, um, Din Djarin, um, and then also the footage of Luke Skywalker, not gonna lie, totally have an emotional reaction every time I see him on screen. They do such a good job with it. Um, they've de-aged Mark Hamill, it's his voice and everything like that. Everything has come full circle in his life, um, showing the cycles of the Force and everything like that. Luke is now training Grogu, um, as Grogu's older, uh, I guess, species mate, or whatever you want to call him, trained Luke and so many other Jedi um, in his long 900-year lifetime. So now we get to see the full circle of Luke being referred to as Master Luke by Ashoka, and which is amazing, or Ahsoka, excuse me. And uh, so, yeah, that's really cool to see that whole aspect of it, is like some of the cinematography and footage of the planet they're training on is beautiful. Um, they have all like the little droids uh, that were collecting rocks and starting to reconstruct the Jedi Temple and Academy um, on that planet. So, um, and I don't know if any of you guys remember Kyle Katarn. He was real popular in the 90s. Uh, he was in Jedi Outcast um, and a couple other uh, spinoffs and books and stuff like that. And I really wish they would bring him back. He's such a great character. Um, they really need to put him in a cinema just because he's been around for so long. Um, he's in Dark Forces, um, a couple other ones and stuff like that. Started as a bounty hunter, um, ended up figuring out he's force sensitive, trained to be a Jedi, um, all that kind of stuff's really cool. 
Um, so, but anyways, back to the Book of Buffett. Um, I like The Mandalorian, don't get me wrong, but we already got two seasons of him. I mean, I wanted this to be about Boba Fett. I want to see, like, his, like, thought processes and, like, what he's doing and how he's, like, going to stop the Pike Syndicate and all that other kind of stuff. Um, we got to see uh, Timothy Oliphant's character, Cobb, in there again. Um, he was in, I believe, the second season of Mandalorian dealing with the Crate Dragon, so that was really cool. Um, and then we also get to see somebody from the animated series, um, Clone Wars, um, and then also from Bad Batch, uh, we got to see Cad Bane, uh, the blue-skinned uh, Western-style bounty hunter. He's a very prolific bounty hunter. He's actually um, as nefarious as Boba Fett um, and some of the other bounty hunters that Vader would use, um, Emperor would use, Jabba would use, um, and all that kind of stuff. And so we see him shoot um, Cobb, Timothy Oliphant's character in the shoulder. Um, his deputy buddy took three shots to the chest and gut, probably not coming back. Um, Timothy Oliphant is like a high billing actor. He's in like Santa Clarita Diet and Girl Next Door and a bunch of other movies and stuff like that. So I don't think that they'd want to get rid of an actor that quickly. So I'm totally expecting him to recover and come back and probably have a vengeance. Um, Mandalorian, Din Djarin, went to go talk to him uh, to try to recruit him and his city's help to fight the Pike Syndicate. So now I think that that alliance will probably be a little bit easier to attain and, and get together. So I'm excited to see that happen, probably like brewing like a real big war like type combat in the next episode. Um, or we might just get all the forces gathered, get it ready and kind of see what the Pikes Syndicate is going to do. And then that'll be our cliffhanger and we'll have to wait for season two of Book of Boba Fett, which I'm expecting them to do. They want to do a big cliffhanger, keep us coming back. Um, they did it really well in The Mandalorian and the second season had uh, Luke, you know, taking all the dark troopers and all that kind of stuff. So, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just wondering why it's still called the book of Boba Fett if the Mandalorian is taking up most of the screen time. You know, I, I like the background. I like showing what he's doing and what he's off doing, showing the decisions of Grogu, having to decide if he wants to become a Mandalorian or a Jedi. Um, and I know in the lore that there's a character that was both um, the creator of the Darksaber that Din Djarin now has. And so I don't understand why, you know, Grogu couldn't go through training with the Mandalorian and Luke and I mean Luke mentions to him I like your life you're only 50 years old and you're like a little baby you know like you're a moment in your life is a lifetime to some other people and so I get it you know he only has so much time to train with these specialists and experts for while they're alive so I get that aspect but I mean why not give him the balance of the Mandalorian culture and you know the respect and spirituality of the force of the Jedi you know he would be an asset you know he might be able to be able to align both of those groups together into a bigger faction that could help support order across the galaxy who knows though i'm just spitballing so but anyways that's my two cents i give it four out of five i give it five out of five if boba fett had more than a minute and a half of, of screen time so but yeah so that's my review thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for subscribing liking hitting the bell to get those email notifications and again, this is Miss Madison, Mr. Sam. We're signing off. Thank you for joining us on Adventures with the Allens.